the paper, first of all. Um, there are several kinds of papers that you can buy uh, that come in a, a, a light gray tone, not a dark gray tone. We don't want a dark gray tone, we want a light gray tone. The two that I recommend are the Canson Mitientes and the Murano paper. Um, they both come in slightly different colors. You can get this one, the Canson, in this uh, cold gray, uh, which is called steel gray. Uh, this one's more of a um, felt gray, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter really so much the color. What matters is the value, uh, how light or dark it is. And we want it to be slightly lighter than a mid-tone because it's going to act like the mid-tone in your figure drawings, all right? The advantage to that is it makes for a very quick drawing. You just throw in some mass, uh, 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 wipe it down uh, gently, and then add some lights, darken the mass, and boom, your drawing is done, okay? Uh, it could literally take you, uh, you know, uh, no more than an hour uh, to finish it. We'll even have a two-day drawing uh, on this kind of paper, which will be really kind of fun, okay? Um, think about how many sheets you want to get. Uh, Sam went in and he bought some $4 sheets of paper uh, because it's a much thicker paper. He got the Murano paper, which, is, uh, which can be, comes in two, two, two different types. It comes in a lighter weight paper, which is what this is, and then his paper, which is almost like drawing on a board for $4. All right, but $2 gets you a decent size or, and a decent weight of paper. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit about the differences between these two, other than color. This one has a pretty even texture on both sides of the, uh, of the paper. I haven't really noticed the difference between the front and the back side of the Murano paper. When it comes to the Canson paper, on the other hand, you'll find a very marked texture uh, on one side and a much smoother texture on the other side. Usually the side that has the sticker is the smoother side. The side that doesn't have the sticker has what looks like an orange peel texture, which can be kind of fun um, uh, to play with, but you have, to, you have to understand that you've got to lay a lot of charcoal down on that surface before your drawing starts looking good, okay? Um, and that's where we get into trouble. We, we start fighting the, fighting the paper uh, and we we'll start fighting against the texture of the paper. You never want to fight against the texture of the paper. You just want to lay more charcoal down, okay? That's the way you're going to be able to get more detail out of your drawing, um, especially if you're using that rough side. So again, I recommend that you try the smooth side first, but then you're welcome to try, uh, you know, and play with the, the rough side. First thing we have to consider is the composition. How are we going to put this figure on the page? Now, um, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm probably going to crop in and just do a small piece. I don't want to. Uh, I don't necessarily want to do the whole figure. Um, uh, it just takes more time. I've got more little spaces to deal with. Okay, and I want to get you drawing. So I'll probably just do the arm and uh, and the breast. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that uh, bit of the hand. Okay, uh, I, can, I can see it here. I think that'll work really nicely. Okay, um, you on the other hand also have a choice when you do your drawings. Do you want to go in for lots of detail? Do you want to go in for, uh, uh, you know, are you working on the big sheet of paper that you can afford some time to go in and, and do lots of detail? Um, so composition is going to be important. Think about where your focal point's going to be, all right? And let those areas become the strongest uh, uh, area. Do you want to set a timer? Yeah, I think we're doing Okay, go ahead. 20? Yeah, 20. All right, so I'm going to start the drawing um, uh, with the 2B. Sometimes I go jump directly in to using the black Conti. Um, but you'll find it a lot easier to start off with the 2B because that's what you're used to, okay? Uh, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, the difference between the two is that the 2B is going to be a lot easier to erase and move around. The Conti, when you lay it down, boy, it's going to stay there, okay? It's going to be very difficult to erase. So, uh, and since I haven't warmed up, I'm going to start with my 2B, okay? All right, 
So um, let me get a, a feel for where this composition is going to go. Here's the arm, upper arm, here's the hand. I think I'll start with the hand. And uh, um, I'll get a nice sort of general shape to the hand, shape of the arm. There's the little uh, lateral epicondyle. There's the upper arm, all the way up. And I want to make sure I'm not cutting him off at the neck, so we'll bring the neck in here. Right? We don't want to create a situation where your figure looks like they've been amputated. So we always want to Well, we never want to cut them off at a joint, okay? That's, that's what we're trying to avoid. All right. So that's actually a little close for me. And I think what I'll do in this case, I'll just end up cropping, cropping there maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I've uh, got a couple of other details happening back here. But remember that I want my focus to be that hand, okay? All right. Once I've got my general sketch in. I'll go ahead and lay in some mass down the side of the arm here, the front of the arm, around the breast area. I can see a cast shadow from the neck. I'll go ahead and put that in. Cast shadow under the breast, over the belly. A little stronger line work here on the hand, maybe. Without getting into too much detail, some more mass on the leg. Cast shadow from the arm. Here. And a lot of times what I'll do when I'm drawing a hand is I'll, uh, I'll come in and I'll draw both sides of it and hope that the middle <laughs> ends up right. Um, Give yourself a little trust and, and you'll find it, that, it'll, that it'll go a long way. Uh, but if you start at one end and, and work your way to the other, um, then, then we have a tendency of making it too small right, in relationship to the, the rest of the figure. Uh, and so that usually doesn't work for me. It might work for you. Okay? So fingers. Without putting a lot of detail in, I'm just suggesting the knuckles, I'm suggesting the direction of the fingers, and the, um, the basic shape, how they fit in with each other. There's the rest of the leg, the knee. sitting on is going to be important for me to capture. Okay, so just a chair shape back there. All right, under the belly, some more mass. And this will just let go into darkness. This will just go into darkness. back and pick up my line a little stronger so I don't lose it when I do my drawing. And this should be your first 20 minutes, right? 
If you get this far in your first 20 minutes, you're in good shape. I'm working a little faster, maybe, I hope. fingers a little bit, even though they all look pretty lit, I know that they're, they're on different planes. Uh, certainly it's a different plane from the hand itself, and I want to make sure that I capture that. Maybe a little cast shadow under each finger. Alright, so there's my initial drawing. Um, again, 20 minutes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to, uh, well, let's see if this works. This is just my 2B. I haven't used any 6B. I'm going to come in and I'm going to wipe it down. Now, I'm going to wipe it down mostly in just the areas that I shaded in. I'm not going to do a lot of wiping over the whole surface. But I'm certainly not going to pay too much attention to it. I'm, I'm just being maybe uh, just a little more selective about the areas that I, that I decide to mass in without being overly conscious that, oh, I have to get this little shape or I have to get that little shape and if I get any over here, that's going to be bad. No, don't worry about that. Okay? I think I'm going to want a little more shadow under the neck. So you can be a little more conscious of where you are, uh, where you are shade, uh, where you're rubbing, but don't uh, don't get too caught up in it. Don't uh, don't start getting fussy with it. Like oh, I only want to shade this in. You know, just you know, blend it all together as much as you can without going over these light areas, perhaps as much as you would on a regular white paper drawing. Okay, I'll go ahead and mask that in too. So I'm not really being particularly careful. Because right. I want a little bit of that charcoal pretty much everywhere. But not exactly everywhere. Now I'm going to come in with my Conti and I'm going to uh, touch up some darks. Uh, you'll see the Conti is a lot stronger and I can be more descriptive with it about the shape and the kind of line that I want to create. Here there's a strong sit core, so I'll go ahead and make sure and I get that sit core and cast shadow. Remember that cast shadows are going to be relatively sharp, especially when they're close to the object that's casting the shadow. Okay. sit core here in the arm pit. So I want to think which direction is this sit core uh, uh, going in? Should I blend it with this side with the arm or should I blend it with the torso? And what we want to think of is the shape that's on top is not the shape that it gets blended into. We want to blend it into the shape that's on the bottom. So I'm going to blend it slightly with the breast, okay, to create the look that the breast is under the, uh, under the arm, okay? Does that make sense? So here too, the breast is on top of the rib cage. So the rib cage gets the, the, sh the blending of that sit core, 
It's not just the line, it's, it's a blending of that line. Okay. Here, uh, they're not really touching, so I'm just going to leave it. Maybe I'll come in and, and I'll strengthen the core shadow. Oh yeah, you know I love core shadows. Okay. I'll strengthen the, uh, the cast shadow. And that will really make this look like a strong reflected light. That's going to be the key there. There is a little bit of light there I'm seeing reflected, but I'm just going to ignore it because I want the light, uh, the reflected light to shine through there. Okay? That's the part that's going to be really interesting uh, for my uh, for my viewer, for the person who's going to be looking at my drawing. Let that blend in a little more. Uh, I might want to separate out the side of the torso from the uh, from the space tone. And right now I'm doing it with a line, but I'll come in instead and I'll just darken in that space tone. And that creates, again, a strong contrast. Okay, do I really want to draw this? No, I'm just going to let it all blend together. Just like I'm going to let this part here blend together. I want the focus to be here. If I draw too much detail and stuff in these other areas, they're going to, they're going to take over. I'll create a, cast sh or a core shadow under the belly maybe, because I like core shadows. I'll strengthen the cast shadow up here, more of a core shadow down the length of the arm. Now your Conti has little scratchy bits in it, okay? Uh, when you come upon a little scratchy bit, please do not keep drawing and because <coughs> you're actually scratching the hell out of your paper. And those are marks that are never going to come out. So what you want to do is either uh, on another piece of paper, a piece of newsprint, get rid of it, or maybe with a little bit of sandpaper, get rid of it, or uh, you could even just flip your, flip, your, flip your Conti over, just turn it over a little bit in your hand, and you'll get to a fresher surface. So you can, <laughs> there you go, it's still there. Did you hear it? Yeah, okay. Uh, and it's still there. What is it? it it's just, uh, um, inconsistency in, 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 the, uh, in the charcoal. Uh, maybe it's a piece of wood that never burned. I don't know. Um, but it's there. It's always there. They're, they haunt you. Maybe I'll just turn it here. I think I'll create a little core shadow along this breast. So we've got cast shadow, which is going to be sharp. Shadow sharp, core shadow is going to be soft. So I can come in and sharpen that. Sharpen that. Cast shadow, core shadow should be soft. Core shadow is soft. I can sharpen this contrast here. All right. So now, I, now that I've applied the Conti, I can, uh, uh, I can blend some of that away. Um, I can use cloth on a finger and, and be more careful with it. I can use a blending stump, right? This is where we're actually uh, just affecting the, uh, the shape here and deciding I want a soft shadow here. Okay, because that's a core shadow. I want a hard line here. T-shirt works good. 
So does blending stump. And you're at this stage. Core shadow, remember, is soft. I don't know why I keep saying it, but I think you would have gotten it by now. So you'll notice that when I blended it, I kind of took away some of the darkness, right? One of the things that happens when we blend. Um, so I can come in now. See, th those are scratches you don't want to have on your drawing. Okay, I don't know if you can see them from where you're at, but um, when you're when we get a break here, you can come on up, take a look at those. Um, I can, if I want a darker dark still, I can come in and use my Prisma color. If I have a Prisma color, I have a Prisma color. I guess it's disappeared. No, this is it. Okay. So uh, maybe I want a darker dark right in here where the arm is touching, where the breast is touching. Notice how I'm letting the charcoal automatically create a sharp and a soft edge for me. Okay, That sharp edge is where the object is on top. The soft edge is where the object is on the bottom. I hope that makes sense the way I'm saying it. Form shadows or core shadows, same thing. Keep those soft. It's already starting to look 3D, isn't it? It's not just me, huh? It's already starting to have some nice effect. And what you'll find is that um, it can be very deceiving because your eye quickly gets used to the color of the paper and thinks, yeah, that's perfect light. But there's nothing wrong with that. It looks perfectly like it's in the light. So I'm done. The drawing's done. Nope. Nope. As the saying goes, the drawing is not done. Okay. Just a little stronger, maybe. Okay. And I mean, other than going in and detailing the hand, most of this is already done. It's, it's, it's somewhat abstract right now. But I can come in and what I want to do is uh, I want to start working on the lights a little bit. And so I'm going to grab my kneaded eraser. Probably your chamois is going to be too dark to do this right now. And we want to just clean up the areas that, are, that I'm going to put the white Conti in. So the white Conti is a different color than the charcoal. Charcoal tends to be warm in color. The white Conti, on the other hand, is cool. And so when the two mix, it creates this really weird bluish color that just does not look very good. So we want to clean up our light areas. And this is why I told you uh, not, to, uh, not to completely cover everything with your, well, when you're wiping. Because we're going to be coming in and erasing most of it anyway. Okay. Here there might be a little more. I could leave some of that tone behind. I kind of like it down there. Okay, so let's give Bob a break. And when we come back, I'll show you the um, I'll show you the finishing touch. We finished cleaning up the, the top of the arm. And what I'll do is because uh, I want you guys to draw. So maybe as you're drawing, I'll finish up the hand. So you can see what, what I do with it. 
But, uh, the hand's going to have a lot of detail in it, and so it's just going to take a lot more time. Um, okay? All right, so I'm cleaning it up. Notice that I'm, I'm leaving some of the um, some of the gray there because I want a soft shadow. I want a soft transition between the form shadow and the light. I want it to be soft and blended. Here, on the other hand, I'm coming right up to the edge of the shadow because I want it to be a cast shadow. Okay. And so the cast shadow is, is going to create a, a, a hard line. Here it might be a little softer in between. Um, okay? Uh, here it's going to be cast, oh, that's a cast shadow, whoops. So it's going to be harder. Uh, here it's going to be a little softer because it's a form shadow. Understanding the difference between form shadows and cast shadows is going to be very crucial to getting this technique to work right. Uh, here up on top, it's going to be a form shadow. Let me just erase some of that. But under the pinky, it's going to be a cast shadow. Okay? Um, make sure that you understand that difference. All right, so I think I've got it all pretty well cleared to where I want. This is a cast shadow. So I'll go ahead and clean it up. This is a form shadow, so I'll keep it blurry. Okay. And now we're going to come in with the magic white Conti. Ooh, say the magic words, abracadabra first. <laughs> um, you don't have to sharpen this. It can be in, in little pieces. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes it's better when it's in little pieces. Okay. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to apply it in the light. And you'll see all of a sudden this drawing is just going to come to life. Now, where I apply it is important. I don't want to apply it everywhere. And I certainly don't want to clog up the gray paper with the white Conti. I want to leave that gray paper there underneath because it creates atmosphere. It creates volume all on its own. Remember that we said that this was going to be uh, a value. This is going to be a, a play a role in our in our drawing. So if we obliterate it, we, we, we've lost it. Okay. So um, what am I going to be looking for? I'm going to be looking for areas where um, where the brightest lights are. Let's let's see let's see where we come. First of all, uh, I want to I want to see a nice spot right here. Okay, and I'll just kind of blend it. Because this is a cast shadow, right? The cast shadow is obscuring some of the roundness of this form. So I can come up right up to the edge of that cast shadow and I can create a little bit of light there. Okay? Maybe I, I can imagine this sort of undulation here that's happening and I'm dramatizing it. It's not quite that, uh, uh, that strong, but it's there. Okay, I didn't do his belly button. Shame on me. I guess I can put it there. Okay. Um, I'll let this just sort of, I'll let this first pass. I'll just put it in. I'll blend it here in just a minute. Let's put some right on the, right on the arm. Now, I want to put it down the center of the arm. I don't want to put it on the edge of the arm. If I put it on the edge of the arm, I've lost what we call that uh, um, uh, turning plane. I've lost uh, where, the, where the object turns away from the light. Okay? So I'm going to lay some down right here, right down along the center, trying to decide where it's strongest. When I get to the hand, I can press a little darker, or a little harder, darker, duh. Okay, here on top of the shoulder, again, because that's a rounded form, I don't want to put it right on the edge of the shoulder. I want to put it mostly in the middle of the shoulder. And it trails off, and maybe it picks up again when I get over here. 
because that's a form, okay? Here we've got a cast shadow again. I can come up right to the edge of that gently without getting too strong. And maybe I'll be a little stronger here in the center of this form and let that just sort of fade off there, okay? Now, um, I'm going to grab a, a, a clean, somewhat clean, uh, blending tool. Could be your fingers. And I'll just blend this a little bit with the background. Notice that I'm uh, essentially erasing some of it. So it's creating kind of like this glow. And that's what I want. I want it to create a glow. Okay. And then I'll just give it one more pass. A little stronger. with the glow underneath. Try to let your marks follow, flow over the form. So you notice here I'm kind of going over that, going over that form here. Same thing here. Okay. If an area has gotten too strong, I can knock it back a little bit with my pinky. Maybe I need some more light on the belly overall. Let's do that. And I'll come in and clean it up a little bit. was maybe too gray. So you can see how we can create a range of values in the light with the, uh, with the white Conti. Okay, we're not limited to uh, just the, the color. We can, we can blend it away and then bring it back. Blend it away, bring it back, do multiple layers of it. And maybe when we find a spot that we really like, that really should have a lot of uh, a strong light, maybe up here, we can come in and just jazz the hell out of it. <laughs> you know, just really, really let that pop there. Uh, and maybe, maybe on the belly here, no, maybe here. I'll just let that pop. Just soften the, the edges of it. And maybe right here. When I get into the hand, there should be some strong lights and shadows in there. Okay? And there we go. Um, you've got lots of examples up there, okay, that you can look at. Um, you can certainly use, you don't have to use the, um, the big stick of Conti. There are charcoal pencils uh, that you could use if you're doing an eyeball or if you're, uh, uh, you know, you need to get in some detail areas. You can do that. Use all the tools at your disposal, okay? So I've just kind of gone in and, and, and done a, a quick drawing. I'm going to work on the hand a little more just so that you have an opportunity to see that. Um, but uh, I think you're ready to go. Okay? All right. What did that take? 30 minutes? You can do it.